Okay, hello everyone again. This afternoon I would like to tell you a bit about the mechanization of conservation agriculture. Not only machinery in the traditional sense, but all kinds of mechanization tools and equipment which would be used to do conservation agriculture in practice and also to show you what is different to conventional agriculture. So in order to do this, I will briefly uh, revisit the definition of conservation agriculture because we will need to know exactly what we are talking about in terms of field operations when we then come to the equipment. And I will then go into more detail about the different operations in agriculture and the kind of equipment which will be used in conservation agriculture and the differences that are there between conservation agriculture and conventional agriculture. And finally, I will hopefully come to some conclusions. Now, starting with the definition, we all know more or less what conservation agriculture is, and I'm pretty sure within this uh, webinar you have been uh, exposed to the definition of conservation agriculture. The important part of the definition is the basing of conservation agriculture of, on three principles, on the three pillars, of which the first is the continuous minimum mechanical soil disturbance. Um, I highlight this particular uh, principle uh, because we talk about minimum soil disturbance. We don't talk about minimum tillage. And the reason for that is that tillage for us is an intervention in the soil uh, where we try to structure the soil and to, or to alter the soil structure with mechanical means. When we work in conservation agriculture, the interventions we do in the soil are exclusively to deposit seed and fertilizer and to do this with the minimum disturbance of the soil, so not in the tillage sense. And that is why we, we tend to uh, put much emphasis that we don't talk about minimum tillage or conservation tillage, we talk about minimum disturbance and conservation agriculture. The second principle is the permanent soil cover. And the third principle is the diversification of species, which can be in rotation sequences or uh, associations at the same time. Now, these three principles can also be quantified. For example, when we talk about minimum soil disturbance, how minimum or how much is minimum soil disturbance? How much do we allow maximum to be disturbed? And we have found that if we disturb less than 25% of the soil surface, but never more than 15 centimeter in a single strip, then we still achieve the basic objectives of conservation agriculture. And you will hear in the second talk more about these issues like, for example, carbon sequestration. Coming to the mollusk cover, we want to achieve a cover as complete as possible, ideally more than 100%. But in no case, less than 30% of the soil should be covered with some residue at the lowest point of the year. And that is because 30% is a minimum threshold to get some erosion control uh, effects. And thirdly, when it comes to rotations, we want to see three different species grown in sequence or in association at a minimum. Less than three species are not really a diversified uh, rotation. Now, with this in, 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 uh, um, in uh, uh, the background, we can actually find conservation agriculture in all kinds of sizes, shapes, and uh, areas. And you see in this picture quite a variety of different tools, mainly for seeding and planting of different sizes and different power sources. And that is what we will talk a bit more today. First of all, when we talk about agriculture, in traditional agriculture, we would always first think about land preparation and tillage. Now, as I explained from the definition, in conservation agriculture, we don't do tillage. We don't do mechanical soil disturbance. And therefore, things like plowing and puddling and rice, for example, are completely out. 
we can have cases, very special cases, where a certain type of soil disturbance uh, is possible or cannot be avoided. For example, if we don't have good no-till planting equipment. And you see in the lower pictures a case of a ripper, for example, with which we can open a planting line with relatively little soil disturbance into which we can then seed our, our crop in the absence of a specified no-till seeder. Or on the right side, you see the planting basins, which can be prepared and created with a normal hoe with no need of a special tool. And they are not ideal, but they do the trick, and we can do conservation agriculture in this way with no special tools. Now, coming to the special tools, we'll start with a manual level. And you see already we have quite nice tools to do manually, low disturbance, direct seeding, as we call it, in no tillage. On the left side, you see a manual jab planter, which allows you to punch the seed into the soil through a residue cover. And along with the seed, you can also place some fertilizer. In the middle picture, you see a similar tool doing the same job as a jab planter, but having the form of a hoe. This is called the lead seeder coming out of China and has been developed to adapt more to the traditional way of using tools like hoeing uh, instead of the jab planter, which is a bit more complex in the operation. And on the right side, you see another example of no-till rice transplanting into a not-tilled, not-puddled uh, rice paddy. And this is done manually by just using a wooden peg or a stick to open the planting hole into which the rice seedling is then placed. Going up one step to animal traction, we also find quite a range of, of equipment for animal traction, direct seeding and uh, um, no-till seeding. Uh, on the left side, simpler tools for animal traction, and then going to the, to the top the center picture, a bit more complex uh, animal traction flounder, which has a much better depth control, having two wheels on, a, on which it is running, and then on the right side, even ride on animal traction notal planters. This equipment has a standard, mostly in the front, a cutting disc, which would cut through the residues, and then it has furrow openers either in the form of a disc or a hoe uh, to place the seed and the fertilizer into the not disturbed no-till uh, soil. And in this, they are not different to most of the tractor planters or seeders. We will see the working principles of animal traction and tractor equipment is in this case fairly similar. Now coming to this, uh, tractor equipment. Again, here we find equipment which allows us to no-till seed with minimum soil disturbance uh, for quite a range of different sizes and shapes of tractors, starting with the single axle tractors on the right side, going to fairly small tractors in the center, like something like 30, 40 horsepower. Uh, and then going up uh, to the 400 horsepower, uh, there is really a continuum of options for no-till tractor-based pulled or mounted um, equipment for planting and seeding. The principles, as I said, uh, these machines work on are mostly the same, having some device to cut through residues and then furrow openers to place the seed and the uh, fertilizer into the soil. There are some specific in, uh, equipments, like on the left side, you see uh, what we call a happy seeder coming out of India, or also in China they are produced, which use a, a PTO-driven chopper to open the way through the residues, and then they can use a whole type uh, furrow openers, which are much cheaper. But you can also see on the top, even for rice transplanting, for mechanical rice transplanting, we have in the meantime equipment that can work in not tilled rice paddies 
So even for rice transplanting, we don't need to funnel or to disturb the soil. This picture shows you a bit in detail the different the basic different elements of a, a furrow opener for a no-till seeder or planter. On the left side you see a double disc opener, on the right side you see a, a chisel tine type opener, and you already see the different level of soil disturbance. Tines usually have higher disturbance than discs, but tines are cheaper in the production and sometimes more suitable for dry soils. Discs, on the other way, have the advantage that they can handle residues much better than tines. And even within the discs and the tines, you will find some designs which have more and some that has, have less soil disturbance. So our uh, um, aim will always be to find those tools that create as little as possible soil disturbance in the no-till planting operation. Now another or the next uh, very important operation in agriculture is weed management. And um, many people think if we don't plow the soil, we will have more problems with weeds. And this is really not the case. We know that weeds are a problem in agriculture and mostly also for all farmers that plow, weed management is a challenge. So by not plowing, we don't really create a bigger challenge. Instead, we have a lot of other options to manage and control weeds. And the most important is to keep the soil covered with either residues or cover crop or a, a crop to suppress the weeds. And we can manage these soil covers in a different way uh, for example, in the harvest, we can lay the, the mulch in a thick layer on the ground, as you see on the left side, or we can have it as a higher stubble for different purposes. This can be advantage. And we can also use a tool which is very characteristic for conservation agriculture called the knife roller you see in the upper right corner. And this tool allows you, if you apply it on a cover crop, for example, at the right stage after flowering, before the grain is, is maturing, you can kill many crops with this knife roller without the need of any chemicals. And by killing the cover crop, the cover crop can create such a mulch that will suppress all other weeds and we will have a complete weed control without need of chemicals. On the other side, you can also specifically control weeds without engaging in soil. For example, by pulling or by chopping off the weeds with a machete. And you can do this also in a mechanized way, as you see in the lower right picture, uh, which is an inter-row mowing or slashing device for tractors, comparable to an inter-row cultivator, but in this case, not engaging into the soil. So there are options in for manual as well as for mechanized farmers to control weeds in conservation agriculture without the use of chemicals. Obviously, we can also use chemicals and then we would use in conservation agriculture similar equipment as to conventional agriculture, mostly spraying equipment, boom sprayers for field crops, but preferably we would choose equipment that allows a lower dose rate, a lower uh, application rate, like for example rotary nozzle applicators with reduced volumes, or the wipe on uh, wick type applicators, which can really apply the product directly to the weed without getting any product on the soil or into the environment. 